Alright beautiful Pisces, welcome back to Intuitive Energy. My name is Jane and we are quickly wrapping up this week. Um, what we're looking at is the outcome, your, your, no, your hopes and fears and then the outcome of the readings for the week. This is from the Celtic Cross. I'd like to remind everybody these are general readings. So, um, not everything might resonate but I consider my readings more like spiritual coachings for Pisces, so um, take it as such, okay? And use your good judgment and empowerment of self to make the right decisions for you. All right, my beautiful Pisces. So, the King of Swords and the Seven of Swords are your hopes and fears. Um, I feel this very much so in this reading for the week. Um, we've had the Seven of Swords. We began with it, I believe, and we were ending note on it. As I spoke yesterday, I do believe the King of Swords has something to do with rising above. Okay, rising above this stuff. All the stuff that you're trying to safeguard yourself from, uh, the stuff that, you know, is, you feel is deceiving you. Um, this is usually the card of theft, but thievery can be also like uh, bad thoughts, you know, stealing away your good energy. It, it could be all kinds of that. You're trying to protect yourself maybe from negative people like we were looking at yesterday. And sometimes you may be feeling undermined. And, um... Like I said, you're in in my first deck where I learned if somebody was ducking from the swords, so it's like ducking to save yourself from from this type of energy. I feel that all week that you have been because this is hopes and fears that you have been really working on it, Pisces. But I believe that you're thinking to yourself, well, I hope that I'm able to do it. I hope that I'm capable of getting past. All of that okay so we're gonna be looking at that more as we go I'm gonna take from ask your guides and begin with that one beep back to anybody who beeped at my house In a small country town, this happens. They know you. They beep as they go by. <laughs> you know you're in a small town. Yeah. Discontent muses. Number eight. Number eight is the card of working hard at something. Pisces. Really, really working hard at something. So let's take a look. I'm going to take a look at this one to see what it has to say. Number eight. Hmm. Sooner or later in our evolutionary process, each of us begins to realize that it's not the having that fulfills our soul, but rather it's the act of creating that brings us satisfaction. Contented with what we've created, no matter how grand, inevitably subsides and our creative juices once again long to flow. That's why the once ideal partner ceases to mesmerize, the perfect job eventually becomes mundane, and a great adventure becomes tedious. Although there's a lot to be said for enjoying what we have now, we must nevertheless respect the fact that our basic nature as creative beings is to create. Without the process, we can't be fully content, at least not for long. Your muses are present, and they call on you now to embrace your creative discontent. I like that. And undertake new projects. Their message, see your frustration as longing to learn more, expand more, dare more, and create more. So there you go, Pisces. We're talking about this. And, and I think that this week, like I said, um, I, I do believe I was talking about it at the, at the beginning of the week. You may find yourself thinking, oh, you know, like I'm putting things in this box and I'm feeling great about it right now, but will it last? And it will. It will. But you have to work at it. Okay? 
you have to work at your creations every single day as you are doing your creative thing. I want you to really enjoy it and really enjoy the creative process. In other words, don't let it get, get dull for you, okay? Even if it's a small thing or a big thing, infuse something creative and fun in your life. Don't let it get boring, okay? So there you go, beautiful Pisces. Okay, um, let's pick from which deck? Let's pick from this one here. Let's pick from this one. The Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. And the Star. Yeah. Again, it's talking about reaching for those goals and those things that are going to help you create. Okay? As I was saying, you have to keep those wheels moving. Okay? You have to keep the cogs going. That creative, that passionate heart. Okay? You see that? You have to keep that heart moving forward and keep things going so that you can uh, reinfuse them with the light of creativity and that optimism, that, that beautiful illumination, that boundless feeling, that peaceful feeling, that it's always like restarting, that fresh start, right? That optimistic fresh start. You have to keep feeding that content in your life, okay? Now it goes through, like I said, it stands to reason that some things will lose their appeal no matter what, but the idea is, is to always be infusing something new into your life to reinvigorate it, right? We're beings that need to be stimulated, and that's what happens here. We just need to stimulate. Now I haven't talked about the world yet because that's the outcome, but we will as we go along. Right now I'm talking about your hopes and fears. I love that the Wheel of Fortune has come in and that's why I mentioned the world. It's because they're the two checkpoint. This is the halfway mark, this is the end mark of, of the uh, Major Arcana. And I like the fact that one always kind of links to the other, right? There's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an end. And I feel that the fool is the beginning, the wheel is the middle, and the world is the end of the journey. And it doesn't mean like life, I'm, I mean like whatever path you're on right now that you're engaging. We do that constantly in our lives. We, we recreate it over and over again, right? Even if it's a goal, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end to a goal. So this is what I'm talking about, okay? So the outcome is, ultimately, you're going to get to the end part, okay? Whatever that may be, whether if, if it's you drop it all together or follow it through to the end, the world, you're going to get to a culminating moment where things are going to, you know, start over. So I like to have, I used to focus on one thing, now I like to have a whole bunch of things that I can pick from because what I feel like doing today may not feel like doing tomorrow, okay? But if I have a variation in the theme, that usually helps a lot, right? You're blossoming here, love that. And again, 33, uh, 3 and 6 showing up, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Um, you're in your creative mode for sure. So it's time to kind of do, with this Aries full moon that just hit, it's time for you to kind of just uh, cash in on that, okay? Aries, for me, like I said, all I keep seeing all this week is like the Ace of Wands showing up. Grab it, get inspired, take that energy and just flow with it, okay? Go with it. Let it blossom into something else, bigger, okay? Um... If you have many things that's going on in your life, some will happen faster, 
some will happen slower. You have that fear card showing up again. Now, I feel that with the hopes and fear, like I said, you're fearing that things may go back to that same old blase, blah, blah type of thing. And you know, I have to tell you is that the important part of you that really matters is always protected in the inside. You see that inside? That's always shielded from that kind of stuff. The core of you is the core of you, which is a spirit living in a physical body, okay? And that, I, I don't say it doesn't change, but it's a constant in your life. And you should use that to anchor you in this lifetime. You should always use it as, I'm here having a journey, living a life, okay? And even people who are not spiritual, they would probably agree, that they arrive, they live, and then they leave, okay? Wherever that goes, wherever they came from, we can all agree, and we can agree that this is a journey, a journey of learning, a journey of, of sadness, of happiness, okay? What you need to do, though, is to not live it in fear. Fear is only good when you need that thing of adrenaline to get you out of danger, but fearing the unknown or fearing things that haven't happened yet or fearing falling back into something from before, these are just little niggling things that help slow down the progress of your blossoming, okay? And I'm speaking to this because we're talking about hopes and fears. So, no matter how many birds you have flying in the air, and uh, how many you're trying to catch here in this cage, know that you are always inside, very much in this beautiful yellow in control uh, solar plexus chakra uh, type deal. You're doing fine, okay? You're doing okay. Now I want you to remind yourself that when you start veering off into that kind of mindset of going, ooh, I've got to safeguard and protect myself and just think to yourself, no, it's time to take a bite out of life. Am I, just, am I just protecting myself in fear of maybe something happening? You know, is it because I saw people doing some crazy things and maybe, okay. Doing the wrong thing. I have so many people who are so afraid to talk because they're afraid of saying and doing the wrong thing. And in this world, I, I completely understand but eh. sometimes you just gotta live. Pisces, you just gotta take life by the balls. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, stop, drop, and ground. I like this. I We've already had it, and I like it. Because, again, it's talking about that beautiful um, balance that you're trying to get here. Integrate your knowing. That's, that's a very good one as well. It's kind of strange because if you look at it from a distance, it almost looks like a hand. But I know it's a fox or something like that. But it almost looks like a hand doing this, if you look. So again, they're showing me a different perception. It all depends how you see it, right? How do you see stuff? And you have the beautiful nine. Nine, in especially with the word knowing, speaks to me of enlightenment. It speaks to me of um, your spiritual body. The one that comes here to learn. It's time to remind yourself that you're here to live, okay? Um, as much as we can at this point escape birth because we're all here, at one point you're not going to escape death. So the best thing you can do for yourself is really live your life, okay? Without staring at the clock. Do you want longevity? Is, it, is that all that matters to you? You know, like, is it the length of time you have here? which is never guaranteed for any reason. 
we all know this. We have, we're very aware of that fact. Or, and, and knowing that fact, can we not just try to have the best life possible? And I'm not saying throw caution to the wind and, you know, throw yourself off stuff and, uh, you know, like I'm not a great big believer in that anyway for myself, for myself only. I'm speaking for myself. Um, you know, I mean like um, parachutes and airplanes and stuff like that. You know, it's not my big, it's not my big thrill. Um, but I mean like just living a very quality driven life of doing the things that you love and trying to find a joy in every day. Because you know, this is a limited time offer, right? So, you know a lot of stuff. And part of that stuff is knowing that you're a spirit in a body. Okay? So, take that moment to let that sink in. Stop, drop, and ground. Understand that this grounding session, literally on the ground, which is the planet. This is the ground on the planet. Um... Don't fool yourself, okay, with this fox, this fox, this thief, into believing that you have to protect yourself from every single experience to make sure that you're completely protected, right? Um, I don't know. Like I said, this is by no way means telling you to do reckless things or be a reckless person. I'm talking about the stuff that maybe, you know, taking a trip somewhere that you didn't want to because you're afraid of going, you know, further away than where you are. Okay? You can you can arrange, you can organize things so that it's the safest for you as possible. But again, like I said, there are no guarantees. I'm I'm really focusing on that because I feel that some of you are trying to decide whether or not you are going somewhere and you're afraid to go somewhere because you're afraid that something may happen now I can't change your mind on that and I don't I won't even try um, but I had a similar fear and you know in some places and I won't say all places I know there's dangerous places in the world but in some places they're just people like us okay so um, I know bad things happen to good people, but not always. So, just... I love this. Your Earth is a nice environment for fine-tuning your knowledge. I love the way that Earth is coming in again. I feel like they're just reiterating that. Enjoy the journey. Okay? Enjoy. My manifesting thoughts are buffered by time. I like that. <laughs> So your earth is a nice environment for fine-tuning your knowledge. For here your thoughts do not translate into instant equivalence. Your thoughts are governed by buffer of time. If you were instantly manifesting, you would be spending more time trying to fix your mistakes than you would have been creating what you want. Absolutely. I find, though, and I'm going to tell you this, I think this is a secret to this, okay? Because this is five, and I guess it's my secret to share because it's my life number. Um... I think that when you send a manifestation to the universe that's got a high vibration, you stand more of a chance of getting it, okay? Because I think that the the stuff that you're talking about, like as they say, it doesn't matter if you're if you're thinking of the things you don't want, that's a lower vibration. I think it gets heard less. I think it's slower to get to where it needs to go. Which is a fine thing for all of us, okay? I think it's a great default to have. So, if you want something, manifest it high. Really high. Joy, happiness, peace, sending goodwill to others is a beautiful, beautiful thing. Ashley gave me an idea. After I finish this, I'm going to do that for somebody who needs it. Absolutely. I'm going to send a beautiful manifestation of love. Okay. I will not attempt to control others' experiences. 
we did talk about that yesterday, and I the the just the fact of this humongous butterfly in this picture is giving me that you know it's giving it to me and it's a three this is this is so big rather than trying to control the experience of all others which you cannot do no matter how hard you try instead intend to control your own participation within those experiences so I think this comes into walk away from other people's stuff if it's bringing you down like I was talking about yesterday and by setting forth your clear image of the life you want to live, you will be guided in every moment toward a smooth and pleasant path for yourself. Exactly. So again, it talks about that vibration. Okay? I have realized that when I write my intentions down, like I, I think I mentioned it yesterday, I come back from that medieval thing and I was disappointed. And then I decided, my guides told me, sit down and journal. Journal what you've learned from your don't wants to your do wants. And so that's what I did. I took everything that I didn't want and wrote down what I did want. So it's like writing the exact opposite of what I had experienced. And lo and behold, the opportunity showed up. We are trying again this weekend. And I'm almost positive that was a um, manifesting vibration. And I always thought it's because I wrote it down, but I think it's because it's the positive vibe that is associated with you. I think it travels a million times faster to intended destination of manifestation than a lower vibe. So give it a shot. Let me know if it works for you. I'd love to hear um, if that did indeed work for you guys, okay? <laughs> because it works for me all the time. I mean, it's this is a very small case of it working. I've had bigger cases where big stuff has happened. Okay? Instead of, like, even when I left my job, when I was saying, I can't stand my job, I would say, I will do this job. I will provide services. It will give me contentment and pleasure. And I could feel it as I wrote it. And I think in a matter of months it came to be so just do it just just do it make it happen okay make it happen for yourself you can you can i'm positive of it okay so let's let's look at this one our varied behavior adds to the planet's well-being mm, i like this one and it's a three again 30 when you remember that nothing can come into your experience without your vibrational invitation to it, and when you remember that the varied behavior of others adds to the balance and well-being of your planet, even if they offer behavior that you don't approve of, and that you do not have to participate in the unwanted behavior and will not unless you give your attention to it, you become more willing to allow others to live as they choose. There you go. Beautiful, 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 right? So again, tapping into, it takes many to build this planet. It takes many different points of view to make this life interesting, first of all, and bring in contrast. If these people, if everybody agreed about everything, it's again what I was talking about yesterday. It's being in a, that lighted white room with no contrast in it. Nobody would ever... Um, have experiences of any kind. So when somebody has their experience and you have yours and you disagree, you get to know what you want, what you don't want, what life has to offer you. Okay? So keep that in mind this week as you are, um, as, as the end, I'm hoping that you continue doing this as the week wears on putting that joy in those compartments and holding on to it and going, this is what I want to focus on. This is what I want to give my attention to. I want to rise above. I don't want to stay behind and safeguard. I don't want to be saying, I'm trying to, to stay away from negative people. I'm saying, I see you. I know. And thank you because what you uh, have has, has, has let me understand what I don't want. Right? Even if it's contrasting to you. 
Okay? It's, it's helped me see what I don't want. And I'm rising above it and I'm putting, I'm shoving all of my beliefs and all the great stuff that I want in that box of joy and keeping it packed full, chock full of all the different goals, the tools, and everything that I want. And we were, this is just like touching on all the stuff we've been talking about this week. Mm hmm. Woo! It's, it's a, yeah, it's quite the, it is quite the thing, Pisces. <laughs> this is quite the thing. Let's keep going. Knight of Pentacles. Slow and steady wins the race. I love my Knight of Pentacles. I don't think I've seen him in a while. He hasn't been around in a while. I shouldn't be surprised, though, with the stop, drop, and ground, especially with the Pentacles. Mm -hmm. Six of Swords. We had the Eight of Cups yesterday. We have the Six of Swords. This is like a journey, a moving on, a getting into something better. Let me see here. What do we have coming up? We have Aries. Yes, we do. And then we have uh, the New Moon in Libra and Solar Eclipse. I just wanted to see what sign it is. It's an air sign next. All right. So, yes. Um... Absolutely. You're balancing things out, okay, for sure. Six for me is another way to kind of move out into, you have the Six of Cups here too as well, okay? It's an important point in your life. Or are you moving on to something? I don't feel any speed in this, though. Um, even in this card, it doesn't seem like this Six of Swords. She's on a boat, but you don't see, like, high-moving waves of any kind. She just seems to be kind of sitting there. Um, you know, knowing that she's going somewhere, but not really uh, going at breakneck speeds. Neither is this Knight of Pentacles. He's really not known for it. He's known as a steady and slow wins the race type of deal. Um, checking out the details as they go. I feel that you're checking the details out in your life. But you're definitely moving out of the picture of what feels bad. Okay? The Seven of Swords, the Six of Swords, or the Seven of Swords. You're definitely moving out of that. And that's what you're focusing on. You're focusing on what needs to be done. The outcome is definitely the world. You're going to get there regardless of how you are, how you're doing, okay? Let's just say that. Um, whether you're really killing it or you're really, <laughs> or at least you feel you're failing at it, you're definitely moving forward, okay? And I wouldn't say you're failing at it, but sometimes we stumble and fall. And that's normal. It's very normal, especially if you put yourself out there. That's the thing. When you take chances, when you do a little more, you'll end up putting your foot in it quite a few times. But that's all right, Pisces. Okay, that's life. That's living. When you play it safe, you really, nothing much happens. But not, nothing happens much in anything else that's part of your life either. So, people like to say you can take calculated risks. 
But there's still risk. That word is still in there, even if they're calculated. That means there's you've looked at the odds and you've figured out the best course of action, but it's not guaranteed, right? So just don't be too hard on yourself. Wow, it took a while, right? <laughs> and out comes the card of contemplation. So again, I'm feeling the slow move coming in. Um, maybe after this Aries, you'll, you'll start going a little slower. Maybe you just start contemplating what your next best move will be. I don't know. But it's definitely going to slow up at one point. Maybe after this week, we're going to have to see. Um, you're going to have to come back and see the reading for tomorrow. Uh, to see what that week um, brings up. Which will be, I believe, the first week in October. Can you believe it, Pisces? We're already there. Unbelievable. Where does time go? Yeah. Again, with the wand energy and the page of wands. I think this card has come out quite a few times this week. This page of wands. Okay. This page of wands is more impulsive. Okay. And that's that's exactly what I'm saying. Even if it's risk, it's calculated risk. Um, but it's new ideas. It's new situation. Um, it's, it's, it's sometimes grabbing on your fearlessness and just you know, doing it. And the thing about this is, is that as scary it is, it does bring joy and happiness. And like I said, you want to hold on to that. You want to hold on to it because you don't want it to let it slip away. Okay, sometimes we feel like things are going to slip away from us. So I'm going to, I'm going to pull from these, the angel cards here have some beautiful angel cards. I haven't pulled any this week, but I'm going to. Because first, we have time, and second, I would love to get like a, an angel message here for you guys to finish off the week. I'm just going to shuffle them. So I'd love it to hear a beautiful message for my beautiful Pisces this week to end their week off right and start their new week off wonderfully. <laughs> Somebody's having fun with her food bowl. looking at a situation from a purely physical perspective and therefore you cannot see the bigger picture. I keep reminding you, this is a journey. You are a spiritual body, right? A spiritual essence in a physical body. And it says, okay, uh, you're looking at the situation from a purely physical perspective and therefore you cannot see the bigger picture and the blessings interwoven within this event. We are angels urge you to trust. For all will work out in the best way possible. Let go of your fear. Um, here we go again with fear, right? Let go of your fear and apprehension and allow God's healing energy to flow to you. Trust, for all will heal in ways you never thought possible. What a beautiful message of like, um, you know, to tell you. Um, you're doing good, okay? Live your life. Be happy in your life, okay? If you're compelled to try something new, don't live in fear, right? All right. Judgment. <sighs> Let go of your fear of being judged. You are good enough. It is time to release all that you have kept safely locked away in your heart. Oh, wow. Your true essence and potential have been restricted by structure and method for long enough. 
There is no right or wrong way. Just be you. Beautiful. Jewel. Every event in life presents us with a new opportunity to experience even greater love. There is a jewel to be found within every teardrop. I love that. Trust. Again, trust. We, your angels, are guiding the current events. This is a time in which you and those close to you will emerge strengthened by ever greater bonds. Trust. Again, the word trust. There's nothing to fear. The word fear. <laughs> There is only love. Isn't that beautiful? Pisces, this is beautiful. Now, I know that they're, um, you know, similar, but yeah, no. No. No, no, no. This is just absolutely fabulous. So, now I'm inspired to take a postcard from Spirit. And then I'm going to close this down. One more week of beautiful, awesome readings. I don't use these nearly enough. They're so gorgeous and they have such beautiful message. I think I will bring them out again when I do the healing in the month of October. The healing reading for all of you. I should call it TLC from Spirit, that reading, because I, I I really feel that there's just love in those readings for all of you. Oh, wow. This one was this way. Okay. It's again talking about humanity. So um, they're wanting to remind us here, Pisces, that we are that we are just, a physical part of us is just one little part of who we are. There's so you over here, <laughs> here over here in the dimension, right, where we all return to, where we are forever from. Um, there is no mystery for us to unravel as we know intimately how connected we all are, how the web of creation works and how spirit is in every aspect of life, from the invisible to the visible but it's impossible for humans to comprehend the complexities of how things actually work because the most important threads in the tapestry don't make sense in the dimension you live in. That said, can you feel the importance of these currents of energy that brings events together in miraculous ways? You can't understand with your mind, but you can know with your heart and soul Trust that even though you don't know the how, the what, or the why, we do surrender to the mystery and have faith that the unseen world is watching you with loving eyes as spirit weaves your life's mysterious and beautiful tapestry in glorious technicolor. Loving you so much, as always. And I think that kind of says it all, doesn't it, Pisces? I mean... This is like a whirlwind. It's a journey. We go beginning, middle, and we just keep doing it over and over again. I just hope, and I hope that these readings help you realize that you have to just keep going in a pace that's going to bring you happiness, joy, and make you smile. And while life can't be perfect every moment, you can bring yourself back to a reset that's better than maybe the one you were taught as a child. Maybe the, the stuff that hurt you so much as you've gone through this lifetime. That you realize that there is always a better way or an other way to reset yourself. That you don't go back to the default of safe and hiding away from your dreams and a life you could be creating for yourself. Okay? We come from so much more. We're forever. And... We come here to have this experience and I want you to take the biggest bite out of your life and your dreams as much as you can. With that, Pisces, that's it for me. I'm going to let you go for this week. This has been, um, yeah, it's been, <laughs> it's been work. It's been work after being off for a couple of weeks and resting, but I'm, I feel good. I feel good. I'm happy and um, 
I can't wait to start a brand new week. I love bringing in all those new energies and, and really tapping into those. So hope you can join me tomorrow and whatever else I might decide to do. It could be a live. I don't know. It keeps coming in. I think I might need to do a live, you guys. All right. I'm sending you love, light, and blessings. Bye for now.